So the second very important phenomenon that interpretations are focused on is transference. And that is my fourth point for today. Transference is probably the most important discovery in the world of early psychoanalysis. And without that discovery, psychoanalysis as a clinical method probably wouldn't work nearly as well today as it does. It is also a very popular topic. And if you ever watch a movie with a psychoanalyst in it, transference will be uh, causing some earthquakes somewhere. And then it's the most discussed element of psychoanalysis. Probably we can fill this whole room with books on psychoanalysis. In any book about psychoanalytic technique, transference takes the major part of the book. Maybe one quarter of the book goes to transference and then all the other phenomena take the rest. Transference is a situation that, especially in long-term psychoanalytic treatments, especially in high-frequency psychoanalytic treatments, so three, four, five sessions per week, there will be very intense emotions that the client will develop about the analyst that are objectively not connected to the personality or the behavior of the analyst and will not be based on the information that's coming from the analyst or anyone else. Here is one very brief example. Miss C felt that her therapist's tradition of taking a two-week summer vacation indicated that she was inattentive to the needs of her patients. So this is, this is from a textbook, from an American textbook. I would like to point out a couple of things. Here, one form of behavior is not discussed or questioned, yet there is uh, an opinion, a feeling that the analyst is inattentive. And these may lead to very painful, very important emotions. Some people give up on the treatment because of summer vacations. Some people's symptoms return because of summer vacations. That's a very major point, that for a certain time the analyst will not be available and that the analyst might have someone else they spend their uh, free time with. This most probably, this specific form of the expression of transference, most probably is connected to some early experiences. Most probably this person felt someone else was inattentive back then. So transference most often or always is connected to something that happened probably decades ago. The second point I would like to make is that a two week summer vacation is something horrible in the United States. I assume one week summer vacation is horrible in Japan and I can tell you all Italian analysts take Ferragosto and don't work for a month and I know people who don't work the whole of July and August. So differences in the world of psychoanalysis depend on so many uh, different issues. Transference was initially considered to be a very specific situation when one mental image in the region of pre-conscious is connected by another mental image that is in the unconscious. And the images which are in the unconscious have a lot of energy with it. They are powerful. And when they touch, so to say, when they electrify the image in the pre-conscious, then something very, very important will happen. So what's in the pre-conscious are mostly things that are going on right now. You can be aware of them if you work on them a little bit. So most probably your image of your analyst is in your preconscious. But there is another image in the unconscious that somehow is associated with it. Maybe even just by one element, by just one association or with many. Could be age or gender or something in the looks or a sentence that you've heard, something. And then the connection is established and then the energy, a lot of energy from the unconscious, electrifies the image in the preconscious, and then you start having very intense emotions in the actual situation. Later on, transference was, transference was understood as a mistaken belief about the connection between old and new, about 
a, a mistaken taking all for new. You're talking to a person on this day, in this year, and all of a sudden you have emotions, you have attitudes, you have beliefs from your past. You completely mix the past relationship, the past situation with the current one. So the emotions are very intense because most probably their origin is in your childhood. Transference can be positive and negative. In the case of the positive one, you think everything wonderful about your analyst. This is the best person in the world, absolutely wise and helpful and kind and pretty and so on and so on. Or you may think your analyst is completely not helpful and then indecent and inattentive as we saw and so on. We believe transference is sometimes such that we consider the analyst to be a maternal figure completely unrelated to the gender, to the actual gender of the person. We need them in that role to be supportive, caring, sustaining, and so on. Or negative paternal transference, for instance, is you are too strict, you're too harsh, you're punishing me all the time, I'm afraid of you, and so on. In many situations, at the peak of transference relationship, there will be some erotic elements in it. Being in love with the analyst, sometimes dreams about holding hands or even dreams about having children together, or when is this analysis going to be over so that we can get married and so on. Some authors write even about eroticized transference, and this expression should be different from, from, from the former in the sense that the client cannot control it in any way. Erotic transference is something usually clients can reflect upon. They can tell you a dream and then think about it and try to figure out what it means. Eroticized transference is the situation when the client does not have the control over the feelings anymore. In terms of clinical differences, we believe that neurotic patients form different forms of transference and psychotic patients form completely different forms of transference. This one should be theoretically expected to be focused on the Oedipus complex situation and this one may go toward the areas of complete enmeshment and loss ident of identity and so on and so on. On the other hand, transference neurosis and transference psychosis mean that at the peak of the transference, all of the basic symptoms will appear in the transference situation. Whatever bothers me, whatever is the real complaint which made me come to therapy, will become evident in the room. Whatever I suffer from, am afraid of, am angry about and so on, will be actual in the room. The same way I will be afraid of the, of the analyst, hate the analyst, and so on and so on. And that is supposed to make it possible for the analyst to work with something that is very alive, very actual, and not just reminiscences, recollections, or retelling. I said at the beginning of, of explaining transference that it may be the most important discovery in the history of psychoanalysis. And the reason for that is that it shows that the unconscious, very, very rarely, if you are extremely um, talented and creative, or if you are completely psychotic, or if you are a small child, the unconscious may speak in isolation. In most cases, the unconscious opens up through a relationship, in a dialogue. Unconscious may be a phenomenon that is developed and revealed in a dialogue.